It's already scary to like go into someone's house and get half naked and like get in front of a camera with a camera right in your face. Like that's so scary. Yeah. Especially like with a stranger, even though like we try and show our personalities and stuff on social media because we want them to feel comfortable. Sure. It doesn't, I mean, you're still going to have nerves nine mm. times out of 10. What's up guys. We're back. It's the best Milan Texas podcast. I'm Ryan Shuchuk. This is Tarek. Avery, my gorgeous wife. We interview small business owners, entrepreneurs, and personalities. If that's your thing, well, hey, give us a give us a subscribe, hit us up, you know, give us a like, give us a share. We have two amazing guests today. This is gonna be a spicy episode. I can already yeah. tell. So this is like right in your wheelhouse. Yeah, put you know, <laughs> put the kids to bed. <laughs> this is probably turn the lights yeah, down. This is probably <laughs> the best of middle in Texas podcast after dark. <laughs> Heather is the owner and photographer of House of Her Studios, located in downtown Midland. Along with fellow photographer Esther and their entire team, House of Her provides luxury boudoir photo and video experiences designed to make women feel confident and powerful. Heather, yes. Esther, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Again. So excited you can make time to uh, hang out with us today yes. and talk about boudoir photography. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Um, did have to do a little bit of research, you know, mm -hmm. I like to research the guests, um, but for the sake of my wife sitting next to me, I barely saw anything. Yeah. <laughs> barely. I was like, nope. Okay. You don't even really know I what just, was like going this on, the whole actually. time. Yeah, I just read words. He's like, you know, I go, just, okay, got it's it. research. Yeah. <laughs> so, Heather, give us a little background on how you got started uh, as a photographer and then uh, opening up your studio. Okay, so I have been in West Texas for about six years. Um, we, me and my husband moved here whenever he got a job, of course. Uh, and so I was bartending forever. Um, even before I moved here, I met a lot of people that way. Um, a lot of women that way that are, um, I, don't, I guess I kind of got lucky. I feel like when it comes to building my portfolio, because I had a bunch of like girlfriends that were down to like, let me take pictures of them okay. and post it on the internet. Cause they didn't care, you know? So that <laughs> was really nice. But, um, it kind of started, I was about to be 30 and I was still working crazy hours, holidays. And I just kind of got heard of it. I wanted to be my own boss. I always yeah. wanted to like have my own thing. So I kind of gave myself a deadline. I was like, okay, by 30, I'm gonna like get out of the bar. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but I just like, I had been in it for a long time and I was just kind of over it, you know? Mm. So one day, actually, Rebecca Heeb, I had always kind of been interested in photography, but I had never really done anything with it. I saw her post something on Facebook. It basically said like, if you're looking for a sign to quit your day job and like follow your dreams, like take it from me, like you can do this. Um, you know, do it. And I literally was at my job at the bar and I texted my husband and I screenshotted it and sent it to him and was like, I think this is my sign, Yeah. you know? And I loved her work so much. So really she is so much younger than me, but she was like such, like I looked up to her a lot. And I think she was like 21 at the time. Oh wow. Um, so she was really young, but she was like killing it. Um, and so anyways, I literally went to Best Buy like the next day bought a camera for like 800 bucks. And I told all my friends, I was like, watch this because I'm kind of the type of person that I'm very strong, like strong willed. Like I'm kind of like stubborn. And if I'm going to do something like I'm going to do it and I'm going to prove everyone wrong, you know? <laughs> so I started just going for it. I was shooting everything, but I, I think I, I wanted to be like a wedding videographer at okay. first. Wow. And then I did a couple of weddings and was like, no, this is not my thing <laughs> at all. <laughs> like it was very intimidating. It was scary because, you know, if you miss the shot, you miss the shot. Yeah. Like you can't redo it. There's no redo. It's just, a, it was a lot and long days and everything too. So um, one of my girlfriends, she kind of does modeling. Her name's Sweet Pea. I don't know if you guys have seen her on Instagram. I haven't. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You act like I'm crazy. Yeah. I know. Like I used to shoot photos in yeah. my in my condo, uh -huh. and 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 Tara would come over, and there's literally like a, you know a half, half naked. naked girl, right. just standing there. You know what yeah. I mean? Just like, and Tara would be like, "Oh, I have the perfect uh, coat." Like, like I had this like red Chanel coat or whatever. Chanel, it was, but, it was baby. But then you know the model would be like, "Is that your girlfriend?" I go, "Yeah." She's like, "Okay, she's super cool." Yeah. And those photos were so good. I love, I actually, I know someone in the Dallas area. It's like a, 
they're not married yet, but they're like a team. And I shot with them. I was like the model for them. And they were like hyping me up like no other. And it was really interesting to see that dynamic because it, it's yeah. a job. It's not like oh, it's yeah. you can definitely there's definitely like a difference in someone who's really, really professional mm -hmm. and someone who's just being a creep. There's a ton of different um, types of photography, wedding, fashion. You have uh, landscape. Why boudoir? OK, so back to Sweet Pea. OK. She hit me up and um, she was like, hey, I want to do some like sexy stuff. And I was like, I mean, I've never done it, but like I'm down to try. So she came to my house. We did some sexy stuff. And I like it. I don't know. It just like lit something in me. Like it was it excited me so much. Like I was just like, this is the only thing I want to do. Like okay. I don't want to do anything else. And then. I quickly realized, like, after doing, like, my first few sessions, w once I started getting clients especially, I realized that it was, like, so much more than sexy photos. And that's what, like, I think really lit a fire in me because I realized, like, the impact that it has on women, not only, like, their confidence, but it also, like, trickles down into everything in their life. You know what I mean? And the relationships and the way that they obviously view themselves – um, and it can be really uh, healing as well. Like it's kind of like therapy a little bit. Mm -hmm. Esther, let's talk about how you got started as a photographer. I was in eighth grade when I got my first DSLR. I shot <laughs> random sessions throughout high school. 20 bucks a session. Nice. Um, I did seniors, the people that were older than me. So that felt weird. And then after high school, I did a little bit of everything just to figure out what type of photography I wanted Style, to do. Yeah. And I quickly realized I was not meant for weddings. I was also not meant for newborns because I don't know how to handle a newborn. <laughs> and a lot of personal things happened and I had experienced a lot of personal growth throughout those years. I had also done my own boudoir session and I realized why can't, why can't I do this? I have always struggled with body image issues growing up uh, from the youngest age. I know I was the biggest kid in my friend group. So that always made me feel really self-conscious yeah. and I'd always looked at myself in a negative light. But after I did these sessions, I was like, you know what, I can be sexy too. It's not just limited to these these smaller people, you know, that yes. the world has made us believe like the standard, the cookie cutter. Yes. Yeah. I grew up in a really religious household, uh, like Mennonite culture. So I come from a Mennonite background, but I don't practice Mennonite religion anymore, but that mindset is very deeply ingrained into me. So we are not allowed to discuss our bodies or appreciate them or admire ourselves. Like mm. that is looked down upon. So doing boudoir was a drastic, very drastic rebellious. Other side one. Of the spectrum. Yes. Yeah. yes. And believe me, I got lots of flack for it. 2018, I took a break from photography in general because, um, my sister had passed away at the beginning of 2018. And so that was a very rough year. I just decided I wasn't going to do any photography business because I was mentally strained. Mm -hmm. um, and I brainstormed all of 2018 because I knew I loved photography. I've always been an artist. I've always created. That's been my outlet for everything. And then in 2019, I started Boudoir and I dove headfirst into it. Um, it was hard because I started in my hometown, which is a yeah. really small, conservative hometown. It was rough. A lot of people, mm, they didn't, they didn't <laughs> agree with what I was doing, I bet. but like it grew more and more people started booking and I even got other Mennonite clients wow. like, because I came from a Mennonite family. Yeah. Like they, there was like that trust. Sure. Yeah, I built a bridge with them. Then I met Heather in November 2020. of 2020, and we did her shoot. My first shoot ever. Yes, I did her first shoot, which is nice. blows my mind. <laughs> um, I still can't believe it. This is this feels like a dream. <laughs> so House of Her is the studio that yeah. you have a whole team, right? Yes, Esther and I are the photographers, um, and then we have two hair makeup girls, so we kind of just switch them out depending on like their availability. And then we also have a studio manager. Um, her name's Emily. She's great. She like is the glue that 
keeps us mm-hmm. together. <laughs> um, because there's a lo- there's like a lot that goes into it. I think sometimes people, and I'm sure with you guys too, like from the outside looking in, people don't realize like all of the moving parts. So Emily helps us with that. And then Melissa and Krishna are our hair and makeup um, artists. You actually purchased a home just to turn into House of Her Studios, right? Yes. And you also rent that out to other photographers? Yes. So how does how does that work? Okay, so I was working out of my house for the first couple of years of my business. And then, you know, I just felt like I was outgrowing my space. So I decided, you know, I had a dream of having my own studio, like, you know, I think so many photographers do. And um, I, I struggled finding a space that fit the aesthetic that I was wanting. So I ended up, I found a house, three bedroom, two bath house. And when when, when we first got it, um, it was very like rustic, masculine, like kind of looked like a man cave. And I turned it the complete opposite. <laughs> so I paint, painted boobs on the walls and like painted the whole house like black and pink, spray painted like stuff. Like I just you know, kind of turned it into like my own, you know, studio. We have three different um, rooms. We have like a a bedroom set. We have a, um, like a couch and mirror plant kind of room. Then we have a tub room now too, which was her great idea. And there's like like a claw foot tub in there and plants and stuff. It's so, it's so cute. I love it. We also have, you know, um, like a glam room too. So the whole, and then of course our office. So like the whole house is business okay. related. Um, and then I do um, offer studio rentals to other photographers because I, I know that there's a need for that here. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys, y'all are probably familiar with Pure Space. Yeah. Okay. So there's only one other um, studio on Pure Space even like within two hours. I noticed that. Oh, wow. yeah. yeah, there's one in Odessa, and then now you know there's my studio um, in Midlands. Right now, I'm just trying to get people in, and so they can see the space and see what you know, because it's interesting to see like what other people create in your space. Mm-hmm. And then also, I am working on getting um, my photo booth rentals. Like it's kind of like an extension going. So okay. I've got. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen like the mirror photo booths yep they're like touch screen they're so cool so we have one of those and then one of the 360 photo booths too for like events yeah you know there's a lot of weddings quinceaneras like even corporate events they are really hard to get like up and running though because there's so many like moving parts yeah Yeah. i'm not good with technology with like you know (laughs) it's stressed it's like the one part of my job that if i could change like i would because it's stresses me out yeah for people who don't know what peer space is i think the easiest way to explain it, it's almost like airbnb yes but for like creative studios yes. and spaces also too i'm planning on kind of arranging the studio a little bit so that i have more like one room dedicated to more of like a studio setup with like backdrops lighting so it's not just like boudoir right yeah so it's pretty it's pretty just versatile. general you, versatile, yeah versatile. so yeah. that that way anyone can book it so when clients book with house of her what does the studio experience look like as soon as you book we can do like you know email or over the phone if you have like if you're the type of person that wants to talk on the phone (laughs) after booking we send over a prep guide that goes over literally everything that you would need to know to you know fully prepare for your session because you want to be able to get the most out of it if you know anything about boudoir it's not super cheap to do. Mm -hmm. Our clients understand that there is value in what we do. That's why they're our clients. That's why we love them is because, Mm -hmm. you know, they really see what it is that we're doing. Because of the investment, we want to make sure that you are completely prepared. We want you to get the most out of your Mm -hmm. session. We also send over a questionnaire. We ask you questions like, um, how much skin are you comfortable showing? You know, how spicy do you want your photos? Um, We also talk about like, what are your favorite parts? of your body so we can like highlight those things and when then we talk about insecurities as well so that way we're all kind of like on the same page we're aware of like what you're trying to like kind of accomplish mm-hmm. in your session we also go over any like trauma or you know past things that may have happened or triggers that you may have so that way because this is very like 
intimate yeah. thing. And I think that it's really, really important to make sure that you're taking care of your clients because it's already scary to like mm -hmm. go into someone's house, you right. know, and get half naked and like get in front of a camera <laughs> with a camera right in your face. Like that's so scary. Yeah. Especially like with a stranger, even though like we try and show our personalities and stuff on social media, like because we want them to feel comfortable. Sure. But it doesn't, I mean, you're still going to have nerves nine mm. times out of 10. So, you know, we go over all of those things. So that way, you know, we're all on the same page and we kind of just like customize a session for them. And then on the day of their session, they come in. Um, of course, they get professional hair and makeup while they sip on a mimosa or coffee if they don't drink. Um, and so we have their favorite music playing as well, mm -hmm. which we get all of those details from the questionnaire. Like the questionnaire is a lot of stuff. All <laughs> yes. <laughs> we want to like completely like curate an experience for you. So after hair and makeup, then we go through the client closet. We have over 300 pieces mm -hmm. of oh, wow. lingerie mm -hmm. and everything is like, we don't have any sheen pieces or like, <laughs> sorry, but everything is like very high end Luxurious. luxury pieces. We help you. Pick out something that looks good on your body type. After that, we do about a one hour, I say one hour, I <laughs> always go over, <laughs> yeah. like an hour and a half probably session. Um, and we pose our clients from head to toe, including facial expressions, which mm -hmm. I think is very important because a lot of times people don't know what to do with their face, which is fine. But we go <laughs> over all of that too. And then directly after their session, which I think is one of the coolest parts, yes. is we sit down and we go through all of their images from oh, their nice. shoot, like directly afterwards. Unedited. And mm -hmm. Unedited. Oh, okay. At first I was kind of like throwing my preset on it, but I decided I kind of like it just unedited. So that way there's still like that shock when they see the final image and they're like, Oh my God. Okay. You know? Mm -hmm. So, and yeah. this is just the jumping off point here. This yes. Is, yeah. They're just seeing how it's they're, the lighting and things. Yes. Like that. They're okay. basically looking for like poses. And so we show them all of their images the same day and they get to hand pick which ones they want to keep. We have a lot of products too, mainly mm -hmm. albums, but we go over like all of the options as far as like cover options and things like that. We also have like wall art and stuff like that too. Okay. So yeah. it's like a half, a half day. day. And then yeah. most of the time our clients afterwards, they're like, you know, getting their husband to take them out to dinner. Because they're all or, done up. Yeah, they're yeah. all done up. They have, they're like feeling really good about themselves. Um, and so they kind of like most of the time, because most of our clients are moms. So usually they have like a sitter for the day and they just mm -hmm. like go and do their thing or go shopping. Yeah. Okay. Or have a so girl's it's, it's like yeah. really fun. It's a like a, day of it, yeah. it's a self care day for sure, which women, I mean, I think you guys can agree. Like we do a lot of things and we always are taking care of everyone else. Yeah. So it's really nice to be able to like be taken care of. Yes. You know what I mean? Sure. Be waited on hand and foot. Not have to think about all the details. Yes. Yeah. So. yeah. What are some do's and don'ts pertaining to wardrobe? Do wear your correct size, something that fits your body well and you feel good in it, then try to fit into the size down. And no spray tans. No spray tans. Oh, I could never do it. We also hate baby dolls. Yes. I feel like for the longest time, plus size women were only offered like baby, baby dolls, dolls, which we yeah. don't have any in the studio. Yeah. And we tell no them don't dolls. bring any. Because it literally, it just hides their shame. Yeah. Yes. So it's interesting because most of, well, I would say, I would say most of our clients, they come in and they're wanting to wear like, I don't know, like a bodysuit or a baby doll, something that's like more covering. I would say probably 100% of our clients say that they don't like their stomach. I think it's just like a universal thing. Like women mm -hmm. are just more, they're hard on themselves about their stomach. So we'll tell them, you know, just try this on. You might surprise yourself. And every single time, yeah. I, I don't think it there's ever up, been a time that they're like, don't like it. Yeah, it ends up actually looking the best. Mm -hmm. And they, because it, they it gravitate shows towards it. After. Their shape, yeah. you know. You're already here. You're already stepping out of your comfort zone. Might as well. Maybe just try something that you wouldn't normally try. Sure. It's all shapes, all sizes. Yes. You know, you actually have merch. What is it? Body shaming is ew. Is ew. Yeah. Oh, I like it's a that. Super, it's super cool. Yeah. We have everything from 32 A, a to 44 I. Okay. We yeah. have extra small to 5X. So there's something for everyone. Because I do have, you know, clients that come mm -hmm. in and they're like, well, you know, I have really big boobs or a really big butt. We have yes. like a mix and match yeah. session okay. too. Yes. So we can like grab from here and here and like make an outfit that's cohesive. Okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Nice. House of Her, no matter your body type, they've got you covered. They've got you covered. <laughs> but barely. So then get uncovered. 
<laughs> I like that. Let's talk social media. Listen, we've had a damn celebrity here. Like, close to like 300,000 followers on TikTok. Dang. Okay, that's yeah. not that's not nothing. 270. Okay, 270. That's we're, close you know, to we're, we're rounding up now. <laughs> um, but the industry that, that you are all in, taking photographs of half-naked women, mm-hmm. even though you probably see a lot more than that when you're going oh, through yeah. your feeds mm-hmm. oh, yeah. on uh, TikTok and Instagram, how do you navigate these ever-changing guidelines? Why were you like, I'm done with you, TikTok, mm-hmm. versus Instagram? So TikTok is much more strict. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh like way strict i was it was getting to the point where i wasn't even like showing photos or showing my clients at all and my videos were getting flagged for sexual activity or whatever so i got really mad at tiktok and i was like you guys (laughs) because i would be scrolling through my for you page and there's you know these big brands like fashion nova with you know models in lingerie showing their entire ass And that was up because I guess they pay TikTok to maybe, I don't know. It's likely they have account managers like because they spend, they spend, right? They spend advertising, right? Yes. And I actually do have a friend of mine. I shot with her a few months ago. Her name's Your Fit Grandma. She has over 3 million followers on TikTok. Like she has like a person that connect, like someone that works for TikTok that like she has direct like line of contact with that she can kind of basically, so her account doesn't get like disabled or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And so she gave me some tips. She said like a get ready with me where you're half naked, but you're like putting clothes on and like showing your outfit that will be allowed to stay up versus like someone doing it for a sexy reason. Okay, so it's so almost like, like an, edu- an ed- educational side of it, yes. right? Or yes. a tutorial or something? Yeah, yes. Okay. So it has to be like more like lighthearted. Also, side, like from the side angle versus like that's will most likely stay up versus like just straight up like front or back shot. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you're not just like, here's my butt, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Those are some, you know, tips that she gave me. But honestly, I just like pretty much decided to get off TikTok just because um, I was so, t- people don't realize how much energy and like time and everything that goes into just making one video. Sometimes mm-hmm. it can take like a couple hours to make one video mm-hmm. and edit it. Yeah. And this isn't even, this is just with my phone. It's not even with like equipment, you know? So I just got tired of like wasting my time. So I decided, you know, I made that video where I was like, y'all can follow me on Instagram if you want to see my stuff. Well, now Instagram's doing the same thing mm-hmm. to me. Did you know that inside of your Instagram settings, there is a sensitive content setting that is automatically set to censor that mm-hmm. so you don't see those posts you have and and instagram didn't just tell everyone yeah. this; they just did it randomly one day and you have to go in there manually and untoggle it so that way you can see our stuff and so uh-huh. i went from you know because i have about twenty one thousand followers on instagram yeah and as of right now five percent of my followers are seeing my content sure five yeah like that makes me not want to even do it but i know that that's something i need to talk about more maybe make some reels to kind of like so people will share it because people just don't know yeah unless they go in there and find it but yeah i feel like i saw that in my settings one day and i was like yeah i said hey show me all the sensitive things (laughs) yeah well the thing is that if you follow someone that has sensitive content, that should bypass that that setting. Oh right, not you know just I mean? showing up in your feed, but you actually right, you like actually follow them. you yeah. in, like intentionally went to this person's profile and followed them because you want to see more of their content. Yeah, yeah. but you're not, you know, you don't get to see it unless you have that setting off. So yeah, that's something that's really frustrating. And then, you know, I've been trying to incorporate a little bit more of non-boudoir related content like we do a crumble cookie review every friday i, I don't that, know yeah. if you guys saw it it hasn't been doing well at all but it's like just that one thing that's not boudoir that's like kind of fun and it's just like our friday afternoon thing that we do yeah um but just kind of also on my story i've been like asking fun questions like you know what's the craziest place you've ever had sex or like crumble cookie actually <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I wish. Wow, how did like I know it's a pain for you to create the yes. content and you're saying like takes hours and stuff like that, but like have you thought about other avenues to go, okay, we realize we can't necessarily, you know, continuously post mm-hmm. lingerie type yeah. things. I mean, like you were saying about the fit grandma, like yeah. thought about like just going the tutorial route or yeah. making it more about you and less about And the experience yeah. too. Mm-hmm. Because we don't have to show anything. Sure. Sure. Like, we can just show the space, kind of talk about, like, what... Because I've made videos of, like, the process yeah. of yeah. everything, which literally doesn't even show any people. I feel like that stuff like would crush, like, especially yeah. with TikTok now. Like, it's yeah. all, like, tutorial or... It's all value-based, right? It's yeah. like... Yeah. It's not even about... It's, like, not about talking about me. Yeah. Uh, you probably don't even care who I am. Right. But it's like, here's what... I can do for here's, you. Yeah, here's what you should do, and it's going to help you. Right. right, and see, that's why so many boudoir photographers were doing great on TikTok because we were doing at-home poses. Mm-hmm. And so, like, mm-hmm. people were following us for that, you know, because they wanted, like, a spicy photo to send their man gotcha. or their mm-hmm. woman, gotcha, you gotcha, know? Gotcha, yeah. Again, I think um, this is definitely the year shorts. of shorts. YouTube and I, shorts. Yeah. You can build an entire channel around the business of boudoir. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where do you see the future of boudoir, the the whole industry going? And where do you see the future of your business headed? Definitely video. Okay. So we do boudoir films now. And that's like, again, they stay up. They get more uh, like attention than photos. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You guys know this. Sure. So we just invested in ed- education for that, which was great. But it, there's a lot to that, too. It's kind of like starting all the way over. For sure. It's so sensual it just is so much more yeah, it's sensual like, you're there. like you get the slow motion and, yes yeah, 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 yeah. and i yeah. love just the it. music always adds like that mm-hmm. feeling yeah mm-hmm. there's you, nothing like response. seeing yourself i've always thought video was so much cooler than photos because even if you think about like people that have passed on like family mm-hmm. members and stuff you have photos of them which is great but seeing like a video of them, like the way that they talk, the way that they move, right. like that is so much more meaningful. It's like you're there. Yeah. yeah. As as creatives, uh-huh. I'd love to get your opinion on like the rise of all like the AI and AI software. It's like, you know, did you see like the Lenza app where you could just like upload your photo and it gives you 50 pictures uh, and they're all like. Oh, oh, like AI. the cartoon type yeah. stuff? Yeah. Like, okay. But some of them are, some of them are like. Very cool. Photo realistic. Yes. Like, you know very I mean? cool. But imagine.ai and it's like imagine mm-hmm. spelled kind of weird. You have to upload roughly like 3000 images that you've edited. Uh-huh. Right. So say from your Lightroom or something like that. Right. Yeah. And once you do that, it trains the AI to edit like you. And so now when you're going into like a brand what? new, like a brand new shoot, Right. And you're having yeah. to pull up. I watched the guy do it. He's like, he's like, he pulled in a photo and he just like clicked and it basically has learned his style. And it was like, boop, no, this is exactly way. what you would have done to this photo in this particular thing. And it took Bro. two seconds. I signed me okay, up. Okay. So, so, but so, then does that company own the rights to all your photos? That's, a good that's question. that part I don't know, but let's just, that's what I might. let's just go you, at this. Let's so pretend the question that is, they don't. You're, you, you, you want you like the idea of AI, like making your lives yeah, easier. Yeah, I didn't easier. have any idea that that was a thing. But my motto is work smarter, yeah, not harder. not harder. I feel like there's an interesting potential model for you guys to like just explore with this because I feel like there's, yeah. there could be this crazy thing where, you're, like you said, you do this whole like consultation. You do tell me tell me what your likes and your dislikes. Tell yeah. me, your, and it's almost like you go like, okay, we're gonna shoot these photos. But additionally, hey, we can also make you look like Wonder Woman. He's just like, I mean, people will eat that up. Yeah, yeah. there's that. I, that's very like a very niche market, sure. but no one else is doing it. Yeah, did you just give me a good? I did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What are your top five lingerie brands? Honey, Honey Burdette. Burdette. Strong, strong first. Playful Promises. Playful Promises is great because they're very size inclusive. They are the reason why we're able to offer up to 44i. Also, uh, Lounge. Yes. Love oh. Savage X Fenty. That's Rihanna's lingerie mm-hmm. brand. Okay. And she's very inclusive as well. Okay. I like Agent Provocateur. Oh, yes. They're a bit more Fancy. high end, they're, but they they're pricey. I have a funny story. Can I go off on yeah. a tangent? Please. Uh, one time I was at a strip club in Vegas. Um, <laughs> go ahead. You can say which one. If which you want. one? Uh, Sapphire. Sapphire. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Sapphire. Um, and one of the girls walked by, and she was just wearing this gorgeous uh, bodysuit. And this was right when I was starting boudoir photography. 
And so I was like looking at all the pieces. I was yeah. like, oh my gosh, I need to add this to my client closet. And I just pulled one of the girls aside. I was like, where did you get your suit? And she goes, agent provocateur. And I'm like, so I went and looked it up. And I was like, never mind. I can't afford that. <laughs> it was like $1,000. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, there was no Stunning. way. We do but it was some beautiful. Pieces. Yeah. They, they are very, very beautiful. We should probably get some more. Huh? Yeah. What is yes. your take on editing? Like, what is your style? We definitely do skin smoothing. Okay. We do edit out anything that's not you. Like, as not far permanent. as, like, yeah. yeah, that's not permanent. So, bruises, blemishes, um, sometimes hair. Like, you know, sometimes you have hair in places that you didn't realize that you had it. But things that we don't edit are going to be... Um, your body, like yeah. your, we won't distort you or make you skinnier or make you have bigger boobs or a bigger butt. And we also don't edit out stretch marks either. No. Um, we want to show you. As you are. As you are, but in a completely different light. So the way that she views herself is not the same way that you view her. Agreed. Right? 100%. So you're probably always trying to tell her like, no, you're fine. Like, I love you. You're beautiful, whatever. And you just don't see it the same. Yeah. So it's like. When you do a shoot, it's kind of like you're able to step back and see yourself from a different perspective and appreciate yourself, you know, like, again, you know, we don't usually like our stomachs. Well, mm -hmm. I had a session done and you could see my full stomach and it was not like stretched out. Like I was kind of sitting to where you could see what my stomach looks like mm -hmm. when I sit down. Right. Mm -hmm. And because I could see myself as a whole, I was like. Why am I just focusing on this? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, there's so much more to us than those little things that we hyper-focus on. Yeah. And you also really only see yourself in one way. You see yourself in the mirror when someone takes a picture of you or whatever. You don't see the way that you look when you're, like, bent over. Okay? So. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you don't see yourself in the way that he sees you. Right. So, like, it's our job to kind of, like, show you the different ways because I don't know how many times I've shown them photos and they go, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I look like that? That's my butt? Yeah. Are you serious? You know, so it's like, I don't know. It's I, I love I, that. I really, yeah, I really do love, like, the reactions yeah. mm -hmm. that we get, which is awesome. Thank you both so much for coming in today. This is We got a ton of great information. I'm glad you had fun on, on the podcast. Yeah, yes. I had, like, way more fun. <laughs> like, this was not as scary as I thought it was going to be. Oh, I had a lot of fun. not at all. So, listen, if you're, in the, if you're in the mood and you want to get the full, luxurious boudoir experience... Uh, check out House of Her. We're going to link the website, your Instagram. We'll link your TikTok. It's still there. Thank you. Um, <laughs> if you're a photographer or, um, you know, you're traveling from out of town, you're coming into Midland, you want to do some photo shoots, it doesn't even have to be boudoir. It can be whatever you want. It's Studio 432. Yes. Is that what it's called? Okay. Studio 432 On is Peer Space. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll On link, Peer Space, yeah. We'll link that as well. Okay. So, um, I also do mentoring too. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Virtual mentoring mainly. But I'm thinking about changing that doing one-on-one so, one. yeah so stay tuned i looked at the you heard it here first yeah. <laughs> hot takes uh, all right check out house of her hot and, takes uh, with heather Ooh. Ooh. that Dang. would be a good podcast dude should we? yeah I'm, hot takes I'm with heather really and esther thinking, like oh yeah i'm thinking we should get on the podcast. we're gonna be yeah. their new podcast producer yes we do. basically yes. Um, first client yes. <laughs> um, all right thanks again and uh we'll see you on the next one bye Bye. Boom, done. So.